Uh, well, I'm very excited to talk about this documentary, guys, coming up that's being released um, uh, about the history of the plastic. But before we get into that, here at Bionic Buzz, we're all about people's passion. I want to know where your passion to be a filmmaker, a storyteller kind of came from. Um, was a certain movie or something that was just naturally for you as a child? Let's start with you, Hugh. Uh, my great grandfather inspired me to make the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his, his, the subject is based on him, but I'm just wondering in general for, because you've done other films and projects in the past, you know? I'm an actor by, mm -hmm. by training mm -hmm. and experience. I've never produced a film before. Very nice. Jean? Here yeah. Is my producer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, it turns out when I was really young, I used to take a cardboard box and, and make frames out of them and look at other kids playing like through the, this cardboard box frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just got very interested in the camera. Uh, that was kind of the place where, uh, where the action was, in my opinion. And uh, it just fascinated me that, that uh, uh, this box could send the signal out in our case, through the Empire State Building and out to your house. So I was always um, into the camera. And I, uh, I was a director of photography most of my career. But all along the way, I made films myself. And now in the last 10 years, I've really morphed into my highest level of incompetence as director, uh, director cameraman, producer. Yes. Well, uh, how did you find out about uh, Hugh's uh, his great grandfather, Leo Bakeland? He's he's basically the inventor of plastic, which is crazy because I had no idea. The documentary is called All Things Bakelite. Uh, when did you first discover about his his great grandfather? Well, I had known kind of peripherally about Bakelite. It was sort of really on the edge of my radar. But what happened was you and I lived in the same town, Reading, Connecticut. And I was working on a, a couple of other history films and he kind of find it. Actually, I hired him and his wife to dance in a in a, uh, a film that I was doing. Actually, they're 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 uh, shadows on the wall uh, of the library. And uh, so he got to know me and we call it the dance of the tarantulas, where you <laughs> try to see, you know, are these people you're dealing with honorable? Are they honest? Are they competent? Uh, that sort of thing. What, what kind of. A temperament do they have? And I think we worked out pretty well. Um, I think we're a pretty good team. So in that in that way, we just kind of met because we lived in the same town and he had a wonderful story and I had some filmmaking skills. So it, it worked together. Yeah. That's very cool. So what, was there like stories passed down from generation to generation here of your great grandfather? You know? Stories in the movie and uh, it's just his life story, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how did uh, how did plastic get his name? If we're, I guess for a while it was what I guess from watching documentary it was called Bakelite or something beforehand. Well, Bakelite is the is the, really the first completely uh, synthetic. synthetic material, the wow. first real plastic, and so it's it's <laughs> Bakelite is <coughs> excuse me the first the first pat plastic and then all the other plastics sort of came came along on its coattails but it was really leo bakelin who figured out this uh, phenolic reaction and how to how to tame it how to how to make it work really okay so plastic kind of the generic term for it. like well like we ought to say kleenex is you know a tissue but a lot of people yeah call, every quality, you know okay well not all plastic is Bakelite, but all mm -hmm. Bakelite is plastic, if that makes sense. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, this is really interesting because I, I consider myself kind of history buff, but I had no anything new about this. So this is going to be really cool to watch when it, it, it comes out June 29th and uh, on all digital platforms. I like hearing about the journey of the filmmaker for this. How long did you guys take? Because documentary, you know, if you didn't have the passion to be a filmmaker, you know, because usually it's a long process. You got to get releases for everything. And um, yeah. especially doing research ahead of time, putting together, you know, you know, three act story, you know. Well, it helps that I'm a stubborn Irishman. Uh, <laughs> spent many years uh, researching uh, and, and I always look for a little kernel, a little story or even a picture that tells me something. One of the interesting stories, because I'm always saying, do we have enough critical mass here? to really tell a good story. And one of the stories was 
to stay cool in the summer, Leo Bacon would walk into his pool fully clothed in a suit and come out soaking wet and everybody laughed at him, but he was the, getting the last laugh because he was cooling himself by evaporation the rest of the afternoon. Evaporation to all the heat out of his body. Wow. So that, that's genius. something that just, I, I dug that idea, you know, and the fact uh -huh. that uh, this guy seemed to have these little mini nervous breakdowns all through his life when he got so frustrated with dealing with the, the plastic bureaucracy and all the uh, the patent infringements he had. And he got away to his place in uh, Florida uh, called Snug, uh, no, the Anchorage on his boat. He had a, what would you call it? A, a yacht, a yacht yeah. called the Ion. So that's part of the story. That's really interesting. Any other, like, I mean, I don't want to give away everything too much in the movie, but we also need the tease to get people to watch it. Any other yeah. interesting stories like that? Because, I mean, the, the one in the pool is pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I you know, I always break break the whole story of plastic into three parts. Mm -hmm. uh, one is when it was first invented, it was great. Like, nothing better than plastic. Then we ran into a time when plastic was considered the, the evil genie out of the bottle and it killed the, you know, killed the animals, the whales, whatever. And I think now we're running, we're coming into an area where we have to live with plastic and realize that it's got a lot of great uses. We just have to be able to control it. So one of the things we did in the film was we, uh, we created three uh, uh, music videos, I would call them, like little, little uh, music uh, interludes that sort of show those three levels of the of plastic that's great because i mean I, I saw that in the trailer like you said like they had the plastic uh, you know next to the sewer uh, entrance that it is we are very dependent on now but you know we have a huge mess of plastic i think in the pacific ocean that's just floating yeah. in a giant circle you know it's like you know. yeah well we didn't get any funding from the plastic industry on this and part of the film really talks about the impact of plastic the misuse of plastic in the world so mm -hmm. we're very interested in figuring out ways to, to make it more manageable. So we're not frigging up to our, our, our top of our heads in plastic in five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one of the next big hot issues in the world, uh, in addition to global warming and uh, the financial mess we're all in because certain people don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the proliferation of plastic and how do we get a hold of it? How do we get a handle on it? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for you know being the forefront of this big issue, and I can't wait to learn so much about your great great grandfather in this uh, upcoming documentary. Like I said, it comes out June 29th, and all. Yeah, know, we're gonna, we're going to be on uh, iTunes, Apple TV Plus, Google Play, YouTube, and uh, Voodoo Domestic. So uh, right. it'll be out there to, to see. Uh, four languages. <laughs> Five languages, if you count. Oh, very cool. Well, yeah, because the plastic affects the whole, the whole world uses it. So, oh, yeah. And, yeah. Well, everyone check out All Things Bakelite. You can go to allthingsbakelite.com for all the information. And I can, any other upcoming projects are you guys allowed to talk about before we let you go? Yeah, we're actually working on a little retro project called The Story of Bakelite that is a a wonderful book that was written by a guy named uh, John Kimberly Mumford in 1925, and we've kind of adapted it uh, to a little a little uh, film. Uh, so we have a YouTube channel. Yeah, we do have a YouTube channel, which is called the LH Baselin Project. The LH Baselin Project uh, LA, uh, LLC, but that's uh, one that has lots of a lot of stuff movies. on it. Yeah, lots oh, of goodies cool. on the website. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So it, there's links probably on the website to all, all that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK. Well, very cool. Well, thank you guys so much for your time to talk to me and keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.